Good morning and welcome to Locked In Stitches. Just give me a moment of course to make sure that everything is coming up correctly. That's what I like to see. Julie Hall is live. I'd prefer it to say Julie Hall is alive, but you know, we'll take what we can get. Let me just make sure that all is okay. That's good. I can hear things, and I'm just going to turn off the um, auto generated captions because they are the bane of my existence. I hate seeing my words come back. <laughs> okay, good morning. How are we going today? As always, I am Julie Hall. Thank you so much for joining us. Um, with me off in the corner here, I've got Louise. I'm sure I'll turn the camera around at some point. There we go. <laughs> um, so... Um, so we've just been having a lovely chat and I can see I've got Naomi White with us and Liz Morris. Thank you so much for joining us. Um, and behind me here, you can see some of the blocks that I have already completed in this fabulous quilt. And good morning to Ray Smith as well. Thank you for popping in. Um, and Ray, I saw a beautiful thing, I think on Aussie Machine Embroidery Addicts this morning that um that you popped up fabulous job woman fantastic um so i'm loving how this is coming out um and just the pop that it's getting from those bright colors so today i'm going to show you how to um with the first block that we did i showed you how to set out individual blocks on a larger piece of fabric. Today I'm going to show you how you can do it if you have a larger hoop. So if you've got a hoop that is long but not necessarily wide enough to do the big design. So a lot of us say have a um, 200 by 300 hoop um, and that's the sort of thing that, um, that I'm meaning with this one. Um, so I'm going to talk you through um, through that and show you how I lay it out on my software. You can, of course, lay it out on your machine as well. I just always do better with software than I do with the machine, but it is whatever works. Okay. Um, as always, please feel free to ask questions, but let's come in and I will show you what I've got. So here I've got my computer screen um, and I've got my artistic digitizer software. I've got my larger hoop because I want to show you how I'm laying this out on the large hoop. Now the premise is the same. It's working out which buttons you particularly need to press. But when a design has already been created, I come in and select from file. And for instance, I'm going to select, and I know I'm working with block five today. And then I'm going to zoom in so you guys can see that a little bit clearer. Now, I've got my center points here. So one center going vertically, one going horizontally, and I need to come through and I'm interested in where that center line is because I want to match it up. But um, we know that an inch is 2.5 or 4 centimeters. So I need to go about one and a quarter centimetres down. So if this is a centimetre, so I'll have one centimetre on this side 
second centimeter on this side and then my quarters on each as well. Now I could come in and bring another design in but quite honestly it is just as easy to come through select the design and go down to copy paste. And I can see uh, Desunga's with us as well. Good morning. Um, now I'm lining the design up so that those center points are going to match as well. Um, so here I have my inch between my designs. I've got the center points marked. And that is ready to then put in the hoop. Now, you know that I'm a bit of a lazy gal. So I'm also going to come in and I'm going to go and find my basting stitches. And I really don't care what size basting stitch I put in there because I'm going to edit it, whatever it is. And I'm going to drag that basting stitch so that it's going to come around um, those blocks and perfectly place them in. Now the other thing that I then want to do is I don't want the basting stitch to stitch out last so instead I'm going to come through my sequencing and I'm going to move that up to the top. Now I've got two samples that I'm going to be showing you today. In the first example when I did this I rather stupidly and let me just Uh, now, at the present time, I am not the world's best um, user of the artistic digitizer software. I am absolutely teaching myself but I am not there yet. So by that do you mean you're stitching one out and then stitching the other one? So what I'm doing here is just attempting to reorganize these so that the colors stitch um, sequence Wouldn't you know it, because I didn't do this earlier, aha, I know what I'm doing, ha 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 ha. Um, so because I didn't do this earlier, um, but what I did with the one that I'm going to show in the first example is I resequenced these. So for instance, all of the um, pink color stitched out on both of them first and it saved me three um three color changes yes however it didn't give me the perfect result that i would like and i've i've deli well i didn't deliberately do it but i haven't glossed over the fact that i've stuffed something up instead i've used it as that teaching moment to show why sometimes it's better to take the more time. Okay, so let's come through and have a look at how we get the stitching started though. So today we're going to work on the next block in 
our lovely collection and what I want to show you is how you are going to line up this block if your hoop is long but not wide so if you've got a hoop that is 28 centimeters or longer you can hoop up in two separate hoopings so what I want here is to have and you'll see that I've marked up my fabric half an inch over each of the center lines so half an inch this way half an inch that way one inch altogether half an inch this way half an inch that way one inch altogether so this is our alignment line where we want to line everything up so let's come through and have a look at how we're now going to set that up on the machine so once we've got our design on the machine we can come through and use and I'm going to show you exactly where I've gone to on my machine we can come through and use the setting points to set exactly where we want our design to sit so this is along our edge and then we need to come through and make sure that this second line is on that point as well once we've done that The main part that we're looking at is along the center of that line and once you're happy with those you can come through and stitch out the basting line just to make sure that everything's in place And you can see there we've got a match there and a match there which is exactly what we want this then becomes your moment of truth And what you can see now is that the so now we've got that basting line we are ready to stitch and I'm going to come through and load in my first color and all is well and good on the first color it's always nice on the first color easy easy peasy it's when we get to the last ones that we have the troubles so how is everybody doing how's everyone's week been sorry guys not sure what's happening here let's just okay that's better okay so a good week in the hall household um, although I did worry on Sunday that I was getting pranked or punked um, so niece who's getting married in a couple of weeks just calls for a chat all lovely 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 um, and I was saying that I was looking forward to um, 
to watching something on telly because you know we've grown they've grown up you know watching different shows with me and one of my guilty pleasures is 90 day fiance um and there was a new season starting then she tells me that her sister is looking like she's going to be a contestant on 90 day fiance that i'm not so happy about one of the reasons i like this show is because it's people at their absolute worst and i mean i love my niece um but she is not going to be edited well um <laughs> <laughs> so what's 90 Day Fiancé? Oh, 90 Day Fiancé, it's such good crap television. Um, so it, it the premise is people from different countries who want a green card to come over and marry their... Um, um, or who, who, who get a special visa where you get to spend 90 days in the country at which time... You have to either get married or leave. Oh. Um, now, it's not often... So far as I'm aware, there's only been one or two instances of there being an Australian on this show. Um, normally, it's um, Russian, Middle Eastern, um, places like um, South Africa... Not South Africa, South America... Um, but yeah, this, so I'm assuming I'm being punked. Um, and, um, you know, so I say to, I say to Denise, well, does your mother know? And the smug little look on her face was, <laughs> cause we were video chatting, <laughs> was, why don't you call her and ask her? Um, mm -hmm. I'm assuming my sister doesn't know and all of them would prefer somebody else tell her. <laughs> um, so then I call um, or I send a text to actual niece hey is Ali just you know messing with me have you applied to 90 Day Fiance yes they have and the producers are really up for them to be on it all they need is an actual engagement before they can move ahead so this girl's going over to America at Easter and I said to Edward, I'm betting at either Easter or um, or in the June hol school holidays, she's going to be getting engaged. Um, but yeah, these shows are so much better, I think, when you don't know and you'll feel free to judge the people who are on it. Yes. Um, oh my goodness. I know, I'm just horrified. Um, and then worse than that... Because I stream these shows on Binge, Binge hasn't uploaded the new episodes. Um, so um, so I'm left without judging others as well. My God, my life's so tough. <laughs> oh, dear. Um, and what ha Why? Imagine if she actually falls in love with him. Oh, she's already in love with him. Like, you know, but this boy was supposed to come out to meet all of us at Easter. Oh. Go to sister's wedding. The The story that I heard was that he didn't get his visa stuff in, in on time, which to me shows blatant disregard for my niece and coming out to see her. Story that the um, second person has told me is that he was denied. Now, no judgment on being denied because I've been denied a visa, like, you know... Um, but um but yeah so i'm but yeah it's it's almost like you know calling my sister's almost as good as watching the damn show now um <laughs> so updates will occur um wow um cameron came home oh it's a good place to be in our place on a wednesday night baking day at the tafe <gasps> oh the lovely um cheese and bacon rolls that I got for um, for a snack on Wednesday night. They were amazing. Um, then cinnamon rolls. Oh. Um, and he hates it when I freeze the bread. But sometimes you've just got to. Okay, so this is where things start to go a little cattywampus. Everything's fine here on this first design. 
it's not until we get to the pink on the second design that you'll see things going awry. Um, but yes, so Monday nights are generally his Cameron's nights to cook. Um, so he went out with me while I was picking something up yesterday and he's been telling me he's going to make me pretzels all week. Cheeky little bugger gets the bowl out, puts a measuring cup next to it and says, I thought I'd see if you could manifest them. <laughs> <laughs> Apparently I'm not very good at that. Ah. Oh, so Lisa Callum, how are you going? Okay. So you can see here. This is where things are going wrong. So can you see just where it's jumped that little stitch there on an area? And look, it's a, it's a couple of millimeters. It's only something that you as the stitcher are going to notice. Um, if you look on my board behind me, is that the first thing you notice about those blocks? Yeah. Um, oh, that might not be the block that's there. Um, <laughs> um, oh no, it is one of the ones that's, that's hanging yeah, up yeah. there. Um, you know, it's not the first thing that you see, but it sure as hell bugged the life out of me. Good morning, Michelle. <laughs> yes, only one or two more sleeps till day or weeks till daylight saving ends. I'm not never quite sure what. First. Okay, so it is this weekend. Well, that'll make it fun. I'm out in Wagga. Um, anybody who is in or near Wagga this weekend, come and say hello to us at Craft Alive. Oh, you get an extra hour of sleep. Yeah, but I've got to remember on which way to do it. But your phone will do it for you. Mm. Um... Now, my other thought when I was doing this was I could very easily come through and put, um, cut the block in half and then join a better half to it. So it's one of those things, never be totally, totally frustrated when things go wrong. You know, it does happen to all of us. Um, so... But if you didn't point it out, nobody would notice. Exactly. And remember a lot of the times, um, and I had somebody say it to me the other day, they like watching my lives because they like seeing when I stuff things up and how I fix it. And, you know, I was joking back that, well, you must get a lot of entertainment then. <laughs> um, <laughs> um, but, yeah, nobody, you know, wants to see some smug person create perfect stuff. Because that's not life. Okay. New bobbin. And these are bobbin intense. Okay. So now let's get ready to do the second hooping up. Okay, so the first side is completed and now I am up to adding the second set of designs in. So what you can see here, and I've got everything on the machine, I've just turned my fabric around. So what I want to be doing is coming through and looking at exactly where that laser point is to get the center and then using my soft using the machine settings to bring 
and I don't know if you can see that there I'm just going to bring it down and show you to bring that laser point right along that line and then come all the way down till we're right along that line now when we return it we should be back at the center point and from there we can do the first colorway which is of course going to hold the block down and it's really just a smooth as you go kind of a thing And that line should be right along there, which it is. And now. Okay, so now we can get back to the stitching. And Michelle's asked the question, is there any need to mirror image the design? For these designs, no, there isn't. Um, and all of the lovely are like that. If you were doing this with other designs, you need to carefully look to see if the design is um, perfectly symmetrical or if it needs to be um, mirror imaged or rotated. So learning from my mistakes, what I've done with this one is I'm just going to stitch out the, um, the top design first and then the bottom design. So other things that I've learned this week um, is I did a day of teaching, which you know, gave me the um, the confidence that I um, that I know what I'm doing. Um, <laughs> I haven't done any corporate training in probably two years. Yeah. Um, oh, we've got Joyce Hardiman from Florida. Hello, Joyce. Thank you for joining us. Um, but the other thing that we did um, was we began we've laid out our plan for our road trip and I've even started to book the accommodation. Um, so I feel, I feel like I'm, you know, really, you know, doing good here. Um, okay. And Michelle's asking, why are we stitching all the top and then the bottom? That's because when I did the last one, it came out, um, with a jump, that then put both blocks ever so slightly out of alignment. So I'm just removing that opportunity, I guess. Can you repeat that? So Michelle's asking why I'm stitching all of the top block, then all of the bottom block. So after the jump in the first set that I did, in the first set of two, I wanted to remove the opportunity of that jump happening so I've decided to go for more color changes and do the entire design at the top and then move down and do the, the entire design oh, at the bottom. Oh, where it went? Yeah, where oh, it went, Caddy Wampus. Oh, okay. So you think by doing that, it will not happen? Well... You're hoping? I'm... I, a, I'm hoping because it's stitching, there's always the, you know, yeah. the unknown element. But if I, if the mistake happened on the top one and I wasn't then stitching the bottom one after it, like if, if the mistake happened in the top block, it would have only affected one block instead of two blocks mm. had I not been doing them 
one after the other. Yeah. And that was a nice thing too. After teaching for the day, we went out for dinner together. It was really weird. Mm. Ugh, husband and I in the same place. <laughs> so young Miss Grace is coming with me this weekend. Ems was a little upset that I um, that I didn't ask her and I had to explain that, yeah, you're welcome to come, babe. But the only way you can get there is on the roof rack. Um, because of how I've got the car set up, it is, um, there's no back seats. That's, it's all machines and, um, and then on top of the machines are stock. So, um, so yeah, poor old Ems would be on the roof rack. So she's going to take a couple of days off and help me with Canberra as well. Um, and hopefully Louise will as well. I was hoping I was, hoping I was going to be invited. <laughs> invited, begged, um, call it what you will. I was going to organise what days. Talk to you um, and it's, it's great. We finished um, Canberra on the Saturday night. And then on the Sunday afternoon, Edward and I have to drive to Sydney to start our trip on Monday. Oh, wow. Um, so time is flying. And you can see just how beautifully those candle wicks create. Um, and I had a lot of fun this week. I actually wrote my tutorial for how I create the candle wick design um, and you know testing it to make sure it's got that right texture and feel and mm. and all of that fun sort of stuff so where what are you going to do with that that's a lesson you're going to I I'm nearly ready I just need to um, sort of check a couple of little editing things and I will have a digitizing manual that is suitable for Janome Digitizer 5.5 Hatch Wilcom and I think Benina um, and then I'm going to transfer it into Artistic Digitizer so that A. I can learn more about the Artistic Digitizer um, and then B. Share it um, and yeah, we're looking at, um, I'm looking at doing a set of um, Zoom classes on digitising. And when are you going to do that? Because I've got a friend who wants to. Okay. I don't, I don't have an actual date yet. Okay. I can tell you about then. So if digitising has been something that you have been interested in learning or learning more of, this one could be for you. And loving even just how then that satin comes around. The more blocks I do, the more I'm, I'm liking the really big pop of colour in this one too. Mm. And it's taking, um, to me it's taking candle wicking and making it a lot more modern. Mm. Um, and yeah that's you know I love the traditional aspect but I like being that little bit quirky as well and doing something different with it now On to our last colour for this block. And then at the end, I'm going to show you how I do the corner blocks. Now, this was an interesting thing. I found this morning an error in the quilt, in the main quilt, the big one that I've already done. Oh. Um, you know, I've owned this quilt now for 10 odd years. Um, that amused the life out of me. Um, 
and I'll show you the um, I always I always hesitate when I say can you spot the error in this because generally then 300 people will find 300 different errors that I hadn't thought of and I just end up wanting to you know oh. cool. <laughs> um, oh that was sad news this morning too to any Americans watching another shooting oh no um it's it was it's in, like a disease over there, isn't it? It was in Nashville, and I, th I think one of the things that I find saddest about this one, um, and it's pro possibly me projecting what I'm assuming has happened a little bit, um, but an ex-student has gone into a religious school that she was a student at, and six children... Or th it, I don't know whether it's six people and three adults, three children, or, or whether it's six children and three adults. I don't honestly know. Um, have been um, have been shot dead, um, but um, yeah, like there's you just gotta you know feel for how would a family overcome that? Okay, so the joy of it is that hasn't made that same little jump there. Yes, because it hasn't done it on the other one, so... No. So it must have just been pressure or... Look, it could be it could be anything. It could be a bumping of the, um, of the arm. It could be, you know... Yeah. Um, I was... It was good yesterday. I was stitching something out and I caught... There was a knot in the thread. And by knot, I mean, you know... Yeah. One had finished and they'd knotted it together. And I... It was a really fine knot. I thought, I wonder if this will go through. Um, so I kind of sat there for the minute waiting for it. And it didn't go through. But then when I stopped the machine and just pulled the thread, it pulled through really easily. Like it was so it was such a fine knot. But it absolutely would have broken the thread, if not the needle. Yeah. And they really shouldn't... They really shouldn't sell that reel of thread should they well I, I think it becomes a bit of a philosophical thing like I'm okay on a big spool with a couple of joints that that part doesn't bother me the ones that that bother me are when there's like you know I'll, if there's more than three joints on a spool I'm going to get a little narky um but, yeah, I'm not sure if there are standards that they have to adhere to. It'd be an interesting thing to ask a thread manufacturer. I might ask Wonderfill whether they have standards or mm. anything like that. Yes, but if you've done a whole design... And that stuffs it. Oh, absolutely. Mm. Absolutely. I love the way it, you know, just so smoothly goes. Ooh, ooh, ooh. Yeah. Doesn't take much to amuse me, people. Not at all. Okay. And then we're going to come through and we're going to do exactly the same thing on the other side so yeah what what this is doing is it's limiting our ability to stuff up mm. um, and quite honestly for an extra three thread changes I'm okay with that yeah yeah that that doesn't bother me I'm good And it really is not, the, the time is exactly the same. Yes, yeah. It's the only time I've lost, per se, is the time in changing the thread colour. Mm. So when you are starting, like while we're, while we're sitting here, this is the time that you can start thinking about what colour you are going to use in your corner blocks. So my corner blocks are um, 
a single um, single color. You could do all of them in different colors, but I wanted a sense of continuity. And when I looked at mine, and I'll show you again once we finish stitching this out, when I looked at mine, I sat there and thought, okay, what colour is, is going to go best and doesn't feel overwhelming? So when I looked at my blocks, I thought if I did either the orange or the pink, it might be a little overwhelming. Mm. For me, the green was a little bit more um, subtle, subtle mm. but would, would go well into those corner block designs. So how many of those corner block ones do you need to make? Okay, well that becomes a philosophical question and I'll show you why soon. Because um, the answer can change a little bit. <laughs> <laughs> of course, when it's done for you, everything can change. Um, and colour two. Doesn't threading look so much better when it's on speed? Mm. <laughs> now, brutal honesty, these designs are probably, I think, a two-hour stitch out. Not each. I'm talking as a as a four-piece block. Yes. Um, and the reason for that is that the candle wicks take a bit of stitching. Yeah. So each of those tiny little candle wick knots has about 28 stitches in it. Wow. So um, what do, what percentage does the fabric actually shrink up? Um, a little bit? Just a little bit? Only a little bit because we are doing that basting. This is not something where you want to say, oh, yeah, that'll be fine. It doesn't matter if it's perfectly in the hoop. You are going to want to... Um, so, you know, I've used my really, um, you know, that crosshatch basting. And you can see there is, you can see as it stitches, there is that tiny little bit of pull there around mm -hmm. it. Um, but if I had that in the hoop and the top piece is in the hoop but isn't hooped per se, mm. that would be a big issue with mm. this. Now, I am off this week to buy um, from Bunnings some, um, some frost block. I've checked this out before um, and I have not been impressed. And I thought I'd um, recorded frost block. frost block. I've got it in my cupboard. Don't go and buy it. Oh, have you got some, have you? Yeah. Okay. Can I have a piece, please? Yes. Um... Okay, so next week I'm going to show you exactly why I am not impressed with it as an embroidery stabiliser. Oh, yeah, I thought about it. I looked at it and I thought it's very similar, but no, I don't think it is. It is so, so fibrous. Yeah. Um, it has to be because it's got to withstand frost and water. And yeah, all. it absolutely it does look like stabiliser. Yeah. Um, but it is not and perforating it is going to put so much crap through your machine yeah um and i do not don't use it no no and i i just want to do a video on why don't use it yeah um you know i mean these machines are expensive yeah um you know we cannot afford to use products that are not recommended um i looked at it and i thought i don't think julie would like me to use it <laughs> And look, I'm a huge fan of, you know, of finding things that work for you. Um, you know, and it's it's the same as I was sitting there yesterday when I was stitching, thinking about what I 
um, you know, the, the brands that tell you not to pull your threads backwards through the machine. Well, you know, in my humble opinion, I call BS on that. Um, for a multi-needle, yep, absolutely. But for a domestic home, yeah, no, I'm calling BS. Um, but, you know, there are others who do, and that's fine. Um, but, yeah, frost block is one where I almost sit there and, you know, no, I want everybody to bend to my will because I don't want you hurting your machines, guys. They're too pretty. They're too lovely. So have people been using frost block? Oh, yeah, it's a huge thing. Not necessarily on my groups because, obviously, I open my mouth too much. Um, but on so many other groups, people are, you know, talking about how much money they save because they use frost block. Um, mm. you know, I also don't use cling film as embroidery topper. Um, oh no. You know, it's the same as when I go to, to put on makeup on those rare occasions. Um, use good stuff. Well, you know, I don't go to the um, to the pantry and get some browning um, sauce and use it. Like, it's it's the right product for the right thing. Mm, yeah. Okay. And yeah, I really am loving how these colours are coming out and coming together. I have a whole world of the frosting stuff. You may have as much as you like. <laughs> Because no, I just figured I'd have to, you know, then give it to Edward to, you know, actually use in the garden. Um, <laughs> He'd be like me, he probably wouldn't use it. No. Nah. Because you've got to take it off every morning. Oh, really? Yeah, you can't leave it on. Oh. And the plant still died. Because <laughs> <laughs> I forgot to water them. <laughs> Okay, and we're nearly done. And I'm actually just going to come through. Okay. Get your fast forward. And then that is our finished block. So, what you can now see is, um, and I've popped up a couple of the blocks just to show how the part that I want to show you today is how I've done the little corner piece and where the error in my ways has been. So if I come through to my monitor. Okay, based on this image, who can see where Julie went wrong? And it wasn't until I'm sitting here counting my corner blocks today so on this corner I've done a quarter or an eighth block on these two corners I've only done halves oh or <laughs> and it honestly it never struck me until I sat there with this this morning counting out 
how many of these eighth blocks I need. So totally up to you. What I am thinking of doing is making, um, is doing the little eighth block. So that's an actually an eighth of a block. So doing the one, two, three, four, five, 10, 12, 14 of those, and then doing the quarter corner blocks as a slightly larger design. So today I'm going to show you how I've done the eighth blocks. And let's come over to the machine and let me just then. Okay. And I'll show you exactly how I've done this one. As per always, there is no magical math. I've taken the block that I use for the regular stitching. So mine is a 14 by 14 inch block to start and I've folded it in quarters and then I'm going to fold that into eighths and cut that up and that is going to give me those eighth blocks. Now, what about the seam allowance? I've, that's why I've gone with a 14 inch because that gives me that little bit extra okay. to play with. So what I've then got is just a little bit of embroiderer's felt because we know our stitching is going to come out prettier with it and we are of course can be put wadding in it so it's not a massive deal. And I've got my hoop here and you can see, you can't see but you can now, so that top portion is matched up to the center line there and then our center line if I fold that in half is right there. So I'm centering the design over that um, so this, over that area. So this center here is the center of this middle of this. Yes. Okay. And I've got my basting stitch in, um, and I've got my wash away thread. Once I've done that, I can then come on through and thread up. And as I said, I'm going to use my gorgeous green. While that's just stitching there, so while that's stitching, I just want to show you the other thing that I'm working on which is a gorgeous little um, quilt showing different sewing means. So I've done my first three blocks and I've actually done my second three blocks as well. So the second three, we've got the Hello Lover, 
sewing is my love language and stitching is my therapy I like that. It's kind of true, isn't it? Yeah. <laughs> um, and they're going to come out as an automatic gift with purchase each month. So it's going to be a different block um, each month that if you purchase from the website will just come straight to you. Now, let's have a look. Going. bit more to go on that one so let me show you so these are all of the designs um, so I'm not sure it doesn't sound like it's my car Hold on guys. Sure, I don't think it was my car, but quite honestly, I'm just glad it wasn't my computer. Yes. <laughs> with the way that green sort of looks. I think that's going to go well. Mm. And particularly with the orange and red fabric. Yeah. Um, I think it needs the green then to go with it. Yeah, I think the other colours would be too much. And when you look at this one here, it's, yeah... Yeah, you've taken the little bit of colour out of this. Line. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, you've done well. come back and I've got my finished design now of course I can just dab that with water um, and that will probably be my goal 
over the rest of today, just getting the rest of those um, mm. eighth blocks done, just so that they're done. Yeah. Like, then, then that just makes it really nice and easy. But I do think that I'm going to um, create something different for the corners. And I just, I just need to decide what that's going to be. But something just a little bit bigger. So there will be, you know, one design. And of course, we'll update for everybody who's purchased um, those designs along the way. Now, because that was in the middle of my, um, of a car screaming. Um, so these are the 12 designs that are going to, um, to come as part of, of this set um i do like the my, my machine is calling and i must sew um and that's what happens isn't it oh and in the rhythm of the needle there's music in the soul yes um and um so so yes that's going to be starting on the first of april um so for april the freebie with purchase is going to be and so it begins um so that is what i am working on at the present time okay what are we thinking are we ready to stitch um now as always um actually can i get you to pass me those uh diva ladies beautiful girls so on Thursday night, I will be, and I'll be with Gracie, actually. Oh, okay. Um, so Grace and I will be coming to you live from um, a really average hotel room in Wagga, I am sure. Um, and But we will have some sneak peeks at Craft Alive. Um, and we will be showing you the next in The Divas. Now, I honestly cannot remember which one I'm up to. So let me see who's month three is Vivian and okay that one's Vivian so that one's coming up loving that one Okay, so Vivian is who we are working on this um, this Thursday evening. And as always, um, oh, somebody else. Okay, that's, sorry, just checking my notes as well. Doing my twisted pouch today. Fantastic. Send photos. We love seeing things that are finished. Um, so Vivian is who we are working on this week. Um, as always, if you've got any questions, please feel free to um, to message or email me. Um, next week, I cannot remember what we are doing, but I'm sure it's going to be a lot of fun. Mm -hmm. Yes. Um, so until next time, guys.